So, yeah, hello everyone. So, today's chapter is chapter 14, the reactive graph. We'll discuss, uh, understand, and un understand the, the reactive graph itself, and learn the importance of invalidation, and learn about the React log package. Um, uh, this is a continuation for chapter three, uh, which is um, what we told that we would explain the behind the scene or in what happened behind the scene in Shiny uh, in terms of reactive graph uh, and how Shiny handle it uh, in uh, behind the scene. Um, so yeah, let's begin. So this is a quick review uh, about chapter three. Uh, basic reactivity, imperative most are, this is declarative shiny, uh, laziness only do what is necessary but could be difficult to debug. So the reactive graph notation is like something like that and we'll see the same kind of visualization for this. Um, so execution order is not top to bottom but determined by the reactive graph and we we'll see that that's the order Sometimes it doesn't, is random. So we'll, we'll discuss this uh, after we begin. And reactive expression with reactive, observers with the observed events, and other stuff. I think the, there's other code, I think. Yeah, this is an ex example of, execu of execution. But yeah, it's, uh, let's, let's dive into the, the chapter itself first. So. Uh, yeah, let's let's dive into the code and we'll go to the. I think it's better to to go to the chapter itself here from the book. Let's go to the step by step. Yeah. Okay. So we want to describe the, the reactive execution process that happened behind the scene in Shiny. Um, so you will find a lot of this kind of graphs uh, happen all the time. And this is what being built behind the scene with, in Shiny uh, that creates dependencies and um, Let's see what let's make it this. Um, so basically these will be the outputs and this will be the inputs and these like the intermediate layer will become the the reactives. And it's uh it's very simple, but again, uh the process itself, we didn't go into deeper details on how Shiny is doing this behind the scenes. So we'll dive into the steps now. Uh, first, um, the connection between, yeah, this is an example, the underlying app is not, yeah, it's, it's not important, but uh, we we will dive into how, how, how Shiny is building up the graphs uh, from bottom to uh, for to top. So let's go into the session begin here. Shiny has pr no prior learning, prior uh, prior knowledge of the relationship between reactives. Um, and we talked about before the consumers, which is the 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 uh, the, uh, the the gray, which is like what consumes data or what consumes uh, reactivity in your active in reactive cons, uh, ecosystem and producers which is are uh, available as a green for computation which is the inputs um, and uh, the the consumers here are called invalidated or invalid nodes and uh, the producers are the available nodes or a green uh, or a green here in, as in this graph and mostly we we said that the consumers is what been uh what been outputted into the screen and the producers which is 
what what be uh, what what, what uh, intrigue or triggers a computation to rerun or to execute. So mostly it's an input, which is so, so uh, here if you if we see that these are the inputs for each, each one of them are if it if it change it will uh, it will trigger uh, a re-execution uh, operation and it will affect all other nodes that depend on them. We'll see how in in a minute. So yeah, let's. Let's go into more details. So this is the beginning session. So when the, when the app starts, uh, Shiny itself, uh, let's, let's go into the book, I think it's better. Um, yeah, so when the session began, we all have this, uh, uh, all the nodes are invalidated except the inputs. So the inputs have this, uh, this default value, so it's not uh, invalidated or changed. And there are three important messages. Uh, there are no connection for between elements or nodes in Shiny. So this is why we have no prior knowledge or relationship created yet. And all reactive expression and outputs are their starting state. And the starting state is uh, is the invalidated state. Uh, we it's, it's like a this. Um, disabled or disactivation phase that they are in so it's it's not yet activated um so this is uh, this is applied on only the reactives and the outputs not the inputs um and the reactive inputs are already uh, indicating that their value are available for computation uh, as i said this they have the default value and the default value didn't change yet. We didn't do anything to the app yet. So there is no execution or computation happened or even like relation building uh, stuff happened. And then the execution began. Then the, ex well, the execution began with the first phase, the execution phase, where Shiny is picking up an output randomly so there is no order. So it's said here that, uh, in short, you should act as a it's random. So Shiny decides which of invalidated input to execute, but it's an, it's a random process, so it's not like having a priority or something. Um, so yeah, it it chooses this uh, this node to be to 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 to, to execute first, and we we uh, we color it with yellow uh, or orange. Uh, that we start to execute it. Now, when we go into the next step, we'll see that this node is dependent on other node, which is this one, and and this is uh, this node is of course is the output, and this node is a reactive. And since an output depends on a reactive, so it it should it uh, initiate. Uh, or trigger this uh, uh, this reactive to be executed first to get this value and then compute itself. So this node is is, is uh, searching for how to execute itself. It found an active a reactive that it dependent uh, it, it has in the its body. Uh, it exists in its body. Um, so it first should execute it and then go and execute it itself. Execute itself. Um, so, um, let's, let's see the, what it said here. So also needs to start computing its value. Uh, note that the output is still computing. Yeah. So the output is still in the, uh, in the execution phase until it's, uh, dependencies of, of reactives or reactive events or reactive values is being executed or calculated. Then after it, it will be computed. So yeah, we, we, what we are trying to do here, we are trying to build a relationship between the input and outputs. And this is how Shiny is doing this behind the scene. Uh, first, as we've said, first step is choosing an output and then um, uh, um, uh, it, it, it calculates it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's it, it, the inner body of its out, of the output. If it's depend on an a reactive, 
this reactive will compute it. If this reactive is, is dependent on other reactive, it, this reactive is computed. So it's like a dependency tree or dependent tree. Um, the more that we go into the details, the more it become uh, intuitive for you to understand the, uh, the relationship, how, how, um, how Shiny is building a relationship between other uh, nodes and each other in the reactive graph. And yeah, so Shiny records the relationship between the output and reactive expression. So this arrow indicating that it recorded uh, or it's um, uh, the execution is uh, or creating a relationship between this this input, uh, this output uh, node and this reactive node. And the direction of the arrow is important. So uh, the expression records that it is used by the output. So this node is used by this node. If it's other way around, the, the, the arrow will become in this um, uh, in this I direction, not in this direction. So it's, it's important to see the arrow the the arrow direction. Um, so yeah, and this is a subtle distinction, but uh, it's important to uh, to become clear when you learn about invalidation. So we'll talk about invalidation phase afterward. Uh, and we'll see that there is three steps for it for it to happen. And yeah, we'll discuss this. But yeah, let's go. Yeah, so this is the second, the second point. Like this first step is begin execution, uh, picking up randomly uh, output. Second step is uh, create, uh, seeing if, it's, uh, if there is a dependency of that output. Here it, it finds a dependency, which is this reactive node. And now it's reading an input. So this input is inside the body of the reactive. So it, it, it creates a dependency between the input and the reactive. And the, uh, the direction of the arrow shows a dependency direction. So this input is depending on this one. And this uh, reactive is depending on the output to uh, um, uh, or sorry uh, the uh, the 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 out the reactive is depending on the input and the output is depending on this reactive and the direction of the arrow shows the case shows that case so unlike like reactive expression reactive or uh, reactive expression or outputs reactives inputs have nothing to execute so they can return immediately since there is uh, as we said and in the first step, here we see that it's already uh, in a valid state. So it's not like it's ready to uh, to change, but it's already calculated its stuff. Uh, and I think this is by uh, by using its, its uh, default value. So it have a default value. So it's already ready uh, already calculated with the default value. I'm talking about the input uh, reactives, uh, but yeah, this is a, at the first phase, so it doesn't need to be calculated at first uh, because it's calculated already. Now, this is oh, okay. So we we go from the output to the input. Now we're creating uh, this relationship uh, that we see here. This dependent uh, on that, and this dependent on that. Uh, so and this this is in in uh, in return it depend uh, it, it's uh, when it changes this will uh, changes this and uh, the reactive itself and the reactive is change it will change the output so it's like a, a cycle of uh, creating dependencies or uh, or uh, monitoring dependencies or re react to the dependencies change. Um, so yeah, this is the first thing. Now let's go into when that happened, when when this relationship is built. Um, so after it, the reactive expression completes. How is this happening? Okay, uh, so let's explain more. The reactive expression reads another reactive. So this expression is in, in itself uh, or reactive is dependent on another reactive and this reactive is dependent on another input. So we go all the way to the input again. And 
to for this to be calculated these two this input okay let's go to this so this input and this reactive should be calculated first so after it's calculated it uh, uh, of course this is dependent on that one so this have to be uh, uh, calculated from this one and yeah this is the direction and the calculation come for the other direction as we said in the cycle before um, so yeah this is uh, this is how the linking between the nodes happen and we will skip we here here is skipped like steps of uh, Making the this node this node yellow and this yellow node, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, achieving the relationship and others this this stuff that we already discussed in uh, this example, uh, just to not repeat his uh, himself. So that's why he he jumped over this uh, in this step. But uh, at the end of this one, we see that the, the dependence the, they all become green, uh, which is been validated and calculated uh, and after the registry active is calculated successfully now it uh, it will compute uh, its value and send it to the output um, so yeah now the reactive expression has finished executing turns green to indicate that it's ready uh, it catches the result yeah so the is the the more important stuff which is these reactive phase or intermediate phase is really uh, like it's, it's storing the values that they get uh, from the input. So um, if, if these values didn't, uh, it's comp uh, after, after the invalidation is happening and we we'll talk about the invalidation after a bit, uh, but after, after the invalidation is happening, it's happened, uh, the, uh, it compares between uh, the old value and the new value and see if it's uh, if there is a new value that doesn't match the old one now it's recalculated the the graph or the uh, the node cycle again and that's how it knows uh, uh, to when when it will use uh, its stored value or uh, calculate the um, Calculate uh, or the graph uh, the graph dependencies again. Um, yeah, and we will go into the details of this one. Uh, but let's continue now. Yeah, this is we talked about output completes. Now after this completes, it the output turns green. And yeah, this is first cycle of uh, an input um, and an invalidation or not invalidation an execution phase. So this is the execution phase, and this is the first execution phase. It picked up the output first time randomly and see its dependencies, calculate the dependency accordingly, and so on and so forth until it all executed completely. Okay, so this is the first phase. So the next output, again, it's random, changes, like uh, chooses other ones as, as, uh, as random as possible, or that's at least his what he mentioning here in the book but uh it's uh, it chooses this one and okay again uh, it she it sees uh where is the dependencies of this one and it finds that this again this reactive graph or this sorry this this reactive value uh is is depend uh is depend on this one so uh there is a, should be an arrow from or a relation created from this node to this node uh, and this is the output, and this is the input. This is the, sorry, the reactor. And yeah, it's it just like um, same as the first one. You know, uh, we'll not repeat ourselves here, but uh, uh, it's the same. So completing the reactive can return their values immediately. So it, the, since the reactive is stored, as I said before, uh, and no inputs are changed, so the cycle is uh, con should continue as no, uh, based on the default values that already calculated uh, when the when the AV first ex uh, uh, first session is up. Um, so 
we did, there is no changes in the input. Now uh, the, the stored value is the same as, as the old one. Uh, the old value is the same as the, uh, as the calculated value from the input. So it doesn't calculate anything new. So it takes uh, uh, the value that already calculated from this node, the reactor, and give it to this output. That's why when we see here in the next step, uh, in this next step, we'll see that uh, it already uh, completed and so on and so forth until all the outputs is being calculated. Now, uh, all of the output have finished execution. Okay, and it's ready. Uh, now the out, uh, we see the, the the output in the in the screen, and uh, uh, no other calculation has happened. The app is uh, the app. I think it's at at rest at least, uh, at, or in terms of the active, it's at rest. So. This is the first phase when we run, we press run app uh, or uh, or running our first running application session, shiny application session, and this uh, all 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 that we discussed it doesn't like um, explain the relationship building uh, process, so that's what we will go into now uh, in the invalidation, how invalidation happening in, uh, in Shiny. Um, invalidation process is the first, is the second step after the execution phase or this invalidation phase after the execution phase. Uh, so yeah, this, uh, this round reactive is complete and no more work uh, will occur until some external force act on the system. So yeah, so when we first run our app, this is the reactive graph that's been built uh, at first. So uh, since this is the first first run, uh, like this is the first run for the app, and it it really like uh, it really shows that this is uh, this this reactive graph uh, is uh, uh, as um, is a static to our inputs, so it's it, it, like it dependent on our input. So then, since we are didn't change our input yet, uh, it it static to its input to, or to to its value now. So in reactive terms, this session is now at rest. So yeah, it's on in rest until any input changes, and then we go into the building relationships again and again and again. Uh, and so if the input changes, and this is a phase here. Um, we see here that this is called an invalidation phase. Let's go into the, the slide. I think it's here or here. Um, reading an input. I have a question about observers. Sure. Um, so in, in this uh, reactive plot, um, observers are like outputs, right? So. For example, with observe event, we have, for example, an input action, and uh, that does something like changes a value in a database. In that case, what I've noticed is when you first launch the app, uh, all the code inside the event expression, not the event expression, sorry, the expression part of the observe event, that still runs the first time, even if you do not click the action button. So that means yeah. that, uh, the, uh, the reactive graph is established the first time the app runs, even without doing the action. Yeah, and that, uh, I think the, I think of the observer as this, it exists in the intermediate here, not the output. So um, I think of it as a reactive component and all the reactive components are uh, as, is a way to, to establish something uh, mm -hmm. in, intermediately between the input and output. So when the, if, I think, if, if my thinking logic or mental model is right, uh, if, uh, if the app is first run, now it should, um, it should see the, the observe event uh, based on something. Um, the default value of it, I think, 
should be should uh, will will be calculated uh, based on the app is already clicked. If it's not like it, I think it simulates a, 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 a click event. Uh, yeah. But I, I don't I don't know I don't I, I don't know I, I'm not sure if it's that's that's ha what's happening, but I think it's sim simulate that it already happened when the first when the app is first run, yeah. and now just to build the first graph of dependencies, and now if if another action is been uh, done on the click event or a slide event or any type of event uh, react react or reacting to an event uh, that's happening on the browser, uh, now it will changes based on the inputs uh, that dependent on them. Um, but yeah, it's a very interesting question. I think the, I think the simulating part is what, what makes it, it, it be applicable. We have, I think, an example. I, was, uh, I think we, I seen, I've seen an example that uses an uh, observe event uh, in this chapter. We'll see if it's, if you'll explain to us how this is happening in in terms of um, does it really simulating the action before it uh, uh, before it uh, being clicked clicked by us the users or not? Yeah, even after reading the chapter, I wasn't sure about what's happening with observe event because if you specify the parameter ignore int equals true, then it will not run that code the first time. It will only run if you click the action button. But otherwise, it, it just runs it the first time. Yeah, I think, where is it? I, I don't see it. Is it in there? OK, I think it's on Raymanism. OK, see, here we he talked about something. Where is it? Okay, yeah, this block. So this block have here we explain the dynamic, the dynamism that we will talk about. But um, here we have to observe, and each, uh, of course, it's, it's explaining why, what is happening, and yeah, it's uh, two observers that depend on the inputs. But since it depends on the input, it, we, it doesn't depend on sending values to the output. That's that's what what we struggle to understand is since there is no, uh, so if, if we created the active graph of this one, for example, um, we will see that A and B is dependent on this observe event, um, uh, or sorry, the, the observe event is dependent on A and B. So if, um, if one of them changes, uh, it will, it should be execute the event again and print good or print uh, the input B uh, based on the input A, of course, but yeah, again, it's it's it here is I think it's not it doesn't like, yeah, it doesn't like she see it shows uh the use case that he's talking about, which what is happening for it, but yeah, uh, I think this is what it happened, what happened uh, as a simulating an event because if it, if it doesn't do that, um. Oh yeah, if since it's um, let me think about it. Let me let me think about it, and we could discuss it at, after the after we finish this uh, yeah, these cool. invalidation steps. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's a very interesting one. So it's, uh, thank you for asking that. Um, okay, so where is we are where we are where we are? Uh, okay, this is complete. So yeah, we were talking about the invalidation phase. Now, after the execution phase, we have an invalidation phase, and the inval in invalidation phase is to start with a changed input. So, the starting point of it that we have an input that changed in the in the shiny app, and now we want to recalculate everything that depend on that input. So we see here that this input is gray, and now we see. Um, we see it as okay. We want to to uh, for to notify uh, the, yeah. So so it uh, it, it uh, the invalidation phase uh, have these three steps for it. 
First one is invalidating the input. Second, uh, it did it here. Uh, invalidating the inputs and then notifying the dependencies, then removing the existing connections. Uh, so these are the three steps for it. Um, so first one is invalidating the input, which is me, which means that we turn the uh, the green to to gray. We turn the the active and ready to uh, to ready to calculate to a, it changed and need to be updated. So that's what this means. And so we, based on this gray, this gray we need to now, since we, we identified uh, that uh, we, uh, we invalidated this one, now we need to notify the dependencies that this, depend this uh, input is changed and we need to change accordingly based on this input. Um, so in the second, in the second like step, we notifying dependencies. So in this phase, you know, in this step, we follow the arrows uh, that we draw earlier, which is these ones, and uh, coloring each node in gray and coloring arrow that really create these dependencies uh, in, uh, as uh, in um, as as a gray again, since the dependencies or so since uh, the input or as a source of truth is changed we need to update it to the other nodes again. So yeah, we see you, you just follow the, the arrows that we created. Arrows here depend, uh, uh, simulate the relationship. So we follow the relationship between nodes and uh, invalidate each node along the way. So here we, we invalidated this one, this one, and this one, and this one. Four nodes are being invalidated based on the change that happened in this input. Um, so yeah, this is the second one, notifying dependencies that there is an, a change happen in the inputs of the source of truth, our source of truth, of course. Uh, now we want to remove these relationships because it's, it could, uh, this uh, or erases as it said here. Um, so completing the invalidation shape. The arrow coming out of the node are one shot notification that will fire the next time a value changes. Now that they have fired, they have fulfilled their purpose and we can erase them. So the invalid, the, the relationship which is here uh, simulated is as an arrow. Um, it holds what um, old values uh, like a record and that it's record its old value. So. Now that we change the source of truth, uh, our source of truth, we need to update this value. So this relationship are not um, uh, are not now needed. Uh, so we know we need to to update it and uh, make it make a new one with the new values that we have from the input. And so yeah, it lists up is why we erase the allow coming invalid. Okay, uh, it may seem preserved that we put so much value on those relationships and now it's thrown them. Okay, but this is a key part of shiny active programming model. So this particular arrow were important, they are out of date. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Since they are out of date, we need to be updated and created over again. Um, okay. So yeah, this is all the three steps of an invalidation. First one, invalidating the input, notifying dependencies, and then removing relationships. So we come back to the first graph that we have, that we have a gray, gray nodes that doesn't, uh, that in the disabled mode, I, I call it disabled mode, and need to be executed. Uh, uh, so we go back into the execution phase, which is the first phase that we have in, when we begin our, our uh, Shiny app. Now, yeah, it's called re-execution, but yeah, we just executing it again. Based on that, again, execution phase, picking up no, uh, a random output, and then um, like do all the, the old process again until we, we go, uh, we achieve the same graph as this one, which is complete again with a new relationship that records the new inputs that have been changed at first. Yeah, so I hope this was clear enough. Um, 
let's see, again, I won't show you the details, but the end of result will be reactive graph at rest with all nodes marked and green. The neat thing about this process is that Shiny has done this minimum amount of work. Um, so yeah, it's it, it show, here it shows the power of Shiny since um, only the dependent component are being invalidated and the other stuff is still valid. Uh, like the, uh, the dependencies that, that depend on this two inputs is, shale, is still not changed and didn't doesn't need to be executed. In other frameworks like Streamlit or something like um, other, uh, like any other framework that uh, really have this kind of dependencies, they all have all the dependencies being calculated every time. So this is a really good point for uh, for Shiny to have, and uh, it shows how 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 reactive programming is uh, is useful as a in the execution and um, holding down resources uh, and minimizing the effort that has been done. Um, okay, so yeah, we have some exercises. Let's go and try it with each other. So yeah, it's very simple exercises. Uh, draw the reactive graph for the polling server function and then explain why the reactives are not run. This one is pretty normal. Uh, yeah, as we have, uh, as we've seen here, the, we have an input, input X and input Y and input Z. So we have three inputs. Of course, if, it, if, we, if, we, if we done it correctly, we have three inputs here x and y and z. So these inputs having um, what three reactives. So we have three reactives um, here and here. And I think the third one is here since it's calculating from these two. Yeah. And yeah, this x is this inverse one. Yeah, all the three are here. And you see this, same as this one. Yeah, this is the sum, and this is the broad, and this is the div division. Um, yeah. So yeah, this, I, I think this is um, basically the, how the reactive itself. So this is the R, the input, and the division is dependent on the other rea two reactives, uh, as we see here in the example here. Uh, and um, yeah, this is basically what is uh, what what Shiny is done behind the scene. So just uh, as, a, as a normal as a small exercise for you to pick up how to. Uh, create reactive graph on the fly with a pen and pencil. And yeah, let's go to the next one. Um, I think it's it's been done. Yeah, this one is done here as well. Server function only contained inputs. So, oh yeah, and there is no outputs here. Uh, so in, yeah, in the graph that we did, we did there is no outputs. It's just creating this, uh, this, uh, Intermediate layers, and we we don't have a, a, a use a use for it. We basically just uh, doing the calculation without using it. Uh, so yeah, zero point only contain inputs and reactive expressions. So there's no outputs here. But yeah, uh, it shows uh, how we could build reactive on a fly. Now let's go to the next one. I think the following. Day, uh, the following reactive graph simulate long running computation by using sys.sleep. Again, a uh, very simple example. We have three reactive values and uh, a three uh, reactive expression uh, correspondingly and one observed event. So ha, ha, we, the question is how long will the graph take to recompute of, uh, if x1 changes? And what about x2 and x3? Um, so yeah, we could follow the execution. What is happening in the execution itself? So we have x1, x2, x3, three react different reactive values. Uh, y1, which is a reactive expression, 
what is done is the, like call this this sys to sleep so to sleep uh, to make the running time environment uh, sleep for one minute one one second or one millisecond I think and then call the reactive uh, so uh, sorry the, uh, call the reactive value or get the value of the reactive value of x1 and uh, same again with y2 did the, do the same thing but we with, with x2 y3 is the one that having multiple uh, different reactive values that been calculated so we have here x2 and x3 and y2 and y y y uh, y2 uh, x1 x2 having a two value three x3 having a three value y2 and y2 is the same as x2 so it's, it's just calculate the x2 again so basically it's the operation done on x2 and x3 in this step in uh, in y in y3 so um if something changed for example if this one it changed okay let's draw it very quickly uh because of our time um yeah we have this x1 and x2 and x3 so um if x1 it changes this x1 so if x1 changes, uh, it should uh, uh, change the, the dependencies on x1. So what, which one of them are dependent on x1? Uh, the, this reactive y1 is only the one that's dependent. So it should take one millisecond for this to be calculated again uh, if, the, if x1 changes. And let's go to the x2. Now x2 is being calculated in two places. It's been calculated in y2 and it's been calculated in y3. So we have two places that that uh, uses x2. Um, so yeah, we have two places that uh, uses x2 and that's why if we go to first one, we have a one second sleep and the second one we have one another one second sleep so we have two second sleep which is will take two milliseconds to be ex de executed so this is x1 okay this is x1 and x2 now the p2 milliseconds and x3 so let's see if this is three x3 i think it's on again uh it it's used just only here in y3 so again it will take just one millisecond to be executed this is solved i think in the uh in the slides right so it should show yeah it show here is like x1 one second two second and uh x2 is x3 is one second it shows an example for yeah it's, we don't need this uh, we we just want to see the um, tracking of the input changes uh, in the code that's that's the important part um, second third exercises yeah it will create a cycle um, yeah like I treat it like a normal L code so here what what happens if the, if we attempt to create a reactive graph with cycles. Cycles mean that uh, we we calculating um, a val a variable that doesn't been calculated yet. Um, so here, as example, uh, we have an x with the active value one, and have y with the active expression that do do, um, do really calculate x and plus y, which is the active expression itself. So since uh, this being calculated first then it's been assigned to the y uh, when he called y here uh, it, uh, it doesn't yet calculate it or it doesn't yet uh, stored so it will uh, produce an error uh, that i doesn't exist or i doesn't like uh, being calculated yet so yeah this will will produce an error let's see the Yeah, when the I start would not exist, thus why would return an error since our 
uh, Y is a reactive assertion that consists of itself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is our small exercises that uh, shows how we could track, how we could build a reactive, a small reactive graph and with pen and pencil, pencil, uh, pen and pencil and paper. And uh, we, uh, we could do this with a, a React log package that we talk about afterward, but um, for more complex, of course, uh, Shiny app. This is very simple app, so this is normal uh, or very easy to calculate this. But uh, in a very big app that have multiple dependencies, like have, we having an authentication module and having like um, a button, uh, uh, like uh, toggling module or other stuff that we have. Uh, so we're creating a lot of dependencies. Uh, so it, it doesn't show that uh, with, uh, it wasn't easy to create it from ha with pen and pencil. But it's a good exercise to understand it, uh, to be to, to calculate it yourself. So that's why we we study it here as uh, as as we do. Now, diamondism, which is uh, uh, yeah, we we talk here about the shiny forgets the connection between reactive components that it depends it spends so much effort recording. This makes shiny reactive dynamic because it can change while the app your app runs. So. The diamondism is coming from when the app is running, is really reacting to what has been done on on running time in running running time. So it runs and observe what has been changed in the inputs. So like it's is actively monitoring what's happening in uh, in the inputs, and if it, if something changed, now it's react to it. Um, so this is diamondism. In, in its core. So this dynamism is so important that, yeah, we want to enforce this here. So we have an example, um, select input, numeric input, numeric input, A and B and choice, three inputs and one output out, out. And we have a text and if expression. So if and else, uh, if an input, if, if the input uh, choice equals A, now calculate A, input A, uh, if L else, calculate B. Okay. So yeah, uh, he, he said here that you might think that this is a reactive graph for this one, since the, out, uh, the output, which is out here, uh, is calculated based on these three inputs. But yeah, that, that's not quite right. So the uh, what happens is, in this particular example, at, at least, um, the choices of calculating the input is based on the choice uh, input. So calculating input of, or, uh, of A and or B is based on the choice first first input, which is choice. So if a choice happen, if choice uh, this one is uh, uh, is being calculated, and it shows A. Um, now, the input H is calculated. Else is input B is calculated. So we have two, um, yeah, two two ways of uh, of of reactive graph. One that we that doesn't have the input itself. So this is a, a three the three nodes. Now, one of them will be cancelled if this is A and choice is A. Choices itself is a. Now it's um, uh, this uh, this one it will uh, will be cancelled or not being calculated since as again we are dealing with shiny here uh, reactive and it's, it's powerful that uh, it doesn't have to create something that it doesn't use. So based on this choice uh, input, we could either calculate uh, the a node or the, the B node, or sorry, um, like make it a bit the dependencies or the graph uh, interchangeably, either one of them, not both, but just one of them based on the choice input. So this this is shown here, I think, um, in the next example or in the next section. You see, yeah, this ensures the, the minimum amount of work 
uh, when an input is invalidated, we have choice E is set to be, then the, the value of input A doesn't affect the output at all. So yeah, we have two choices. And these relationships are done. Uh, done, uh, it shows uh, uh, the, the, gra the graphs that have been executed. So if it choice is, uh, is A, the A1 is, uh, will be executed. If it choices B, the B1 will be executed, and so on and so forth. The more like explaining example is this blog that I already opened, uh, which shows the dependencies. So here we have two observe events and uh, the, um, it's very different than, I think it's, it's also, yeah, let's, let's go back and then go, go here afterwards. He said here is worth nothing uh, that minor change will cause the output always depend on both A and B. So when this is will happen, when we calculating A and B and store it, it's the, sorry, not calculating, getting the value and store it in a variables. So we getting the value here of the inputs and uh, store it in the, these, uh, store it in A and store it in B uh, as a variables. And afterward, we, we are using these values uh, both uh, uh, in, uh, in our choice way uh, or, or choice uh, if conditioning. Um, a and B or is already cal both calculated. So they will be calculated never, uh, neither um, um, whether the choice is A or B, they both will be calculated. So, this is the normal R code, like if you think about it, like this is the, uh, like matches with our uh, our way of thinking. Since we or this already calculated, we're just using the values. So it uh, the action already done, but uh, and the two values is already stored. And yeah, the in the blog, uh, where is the blog? The same one, same thing is happening here. Where is the input? Um, yeah, here is a, uh, here here we store the values. We execute the false value, so we're getting the value itself, um, and from inputs and store it, and use this stored variables to as a, in the if conditioning. This will make a dependency. So this like end of the line or in short, this will take less time. This will this one will take less time to compute than this one, since this one is, is computing A and B, and this only calculate based on the choice, either either an input A or input B. So, yeah, you have to be yeah mindful about this. If to you could use it to your advantage uh, to separate. For example, here's a here's the author of this blog say it only. Um, the reason for this behavior is that the dependencies are built as the code is run. Yeah, so this is the, like on running time, happening for running time. Uh, not based on how the observer or any reactive is initially defined. This may seem like a bug, no, yeah, but it's actually consistent with how our works in general. And you uh, can be a very useful feature once uh, you will understood. I personally, yeah, this one is what's, what's what I want to share, to refer to. I personally use this feature extensively in my R package shiny data to help separate the business logic from the UI logic. And um, yeah, so yeah, just, just remember that to make it more efficient or a best, as a best practice, if you, want, if you have this really condition or controlling uh, 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 conditioning stuff that you, you want to have build based on the inputs, just make sure that you not store the values first or not uh, store the values of an input first and then uh, based on this value do do other do the conditioning no the calculated on the fly in the uh, in the expression uh, in the conditioning itself or in conditioning statement itself like it here input a if it's not go to the input b that's it um yeah so any question here?
Oh, good. Got it. Awesome. Okay, we have the React log I'm package. Good. Awesome. Sure. So we have the React log package uh, that did, uh, I think, is uh, this kind of graph that we we saw in here and here and over all over the chapter. It it did it with, I think we there is we have an example demo example. Yeah, I think we have we have it in that already. So yeah, and I think the demo is, I've seen the demo as well, yeah. So yeah, this is the, the output of the React log package. And let's try to see how I put, yeah. So if we try to, move inward and zoom in and see that we have an input called count here and its value is n uh, is six and it's dependent on something called whales it it it, uh, it shows that like there is there is a fully active graph you see here it's, it's it's not that complicated also but we have the uh we have the value and the execution type, calculation time, and uh, what is the value itself, what is uh, what is the input called or the output called that we are calculating. Um, but yeah, uh, and I think we have also this next step. So yeah, we could, yeah, we could see how this graph is being executed uh, in steps. And this is shown, this is shown like uh, in this in this picture, is not most. So yeah, we've seen it happening. You see the gray and the and the and the orange and the green, same as we we talked about. You see here that output C text and so an output uh, C verbatim, verbatim as been uh, calculated, so it's, an, it's the execution phase happening first, and we track its dependencies until we get into the input. And since the input is already calculated, we already cal calculate the dependencies, and uh, and yeah, the cycle cycle continues. Um, after the after the input is changed, we re we have the uh, we enter in the re execution phase. And again, calculating the output that depends on that input. Um, yeah, very useful and very useful actually as a debugging tool uh, for you to debug your uh, um, like reactivity bugs, not uh, not normal code bugs or uh, or errors. Um, so some some kind of uh, there is a logic or uh, like it's a, a reactivity logic uh, that's been. Uh, you don't understand or or having like unnormal values to to your outputs and you don't know how it how it's been calculated. This is very will be very useful to, to use uh, to really track its value. And also it's because it, it, it's you could do this in the debugger, but I think we're using the React log from the reactive point of view, you it will be most uh, much uh, easier for you if if you actually know that it should it could be the reactive we want to check if it, it could be the reactivity that have something wrong with it not uh, the the coding part um so yeah okay so yeah yes that's it that's it now the summary uh yeah we could uh, we could uh, like uh, go back to into the um, what we talk, what uh, what Omer was talking about, which is how we could use um, the React observe reactive, or how we how it shows the observe reactive in the reactive graph, uh, since there is no output for it, or not connection to an output, and uh, it really depends on uh, the event, not depending on 
anything else than an event. Um, so yeah, uh, let's discuss this. Uh, do, do you guys have any ideas how this could be done? I, I, I said that could be sim simulating the action first, uh, but what I what come to me now it's it could be that um, it doesn't even calculate uh, um, uh, until it's uh, it's first it's first re execution phase I think uh, but yeah it's, uh, I'm just thinking with you guys so if you have I any remember uh, at, uh, in the previous chapter that discusses reactivity. It was um, it actually talked about the observers, sorry, the outputs are like observers. So outputs are special observers. So probably that means that for observed event function, it would be like an output if we draw it in the React uh, reactive graph. And uh, it has a dependency on, for example, the action button. So action button has an ID, so we get an input from it. And that observer is dependent uh, reactively on that input. So I think it is it is like, it would be drawn like a output is drawn in the reactive graph. Okay, so what, let me get what you're trying to portray here. So you're, you, you're telling me that um, he, he uh, he's, um, his um, his understanding the uh, reactive ev uh, event as an output, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it you like um, we have a couple of inputs here, and we have this. Uh, let's make it like square. Uh, a reactive event. Let's assume that we have these three inputs, and uh, when you click a button then you get an output and the output could be like uh, a text so so the the, the 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 button is uh, is an input right yeah it, it is dependent on the inputs so this is the button like button one okay um so when when the button clicked is trigger the reactive to be the reactive event to be calculated right so yeah, so um but I'm thinking in this case, uh, for example, we have uh render text inside the observe event. So observe event has a reactive dependency on the input uh, button, and the output that is created is render text. So that render text is the output dependent on the input action button. Mm, interesting. So we have an output inside the reactive event. Uh, not the reactive event is an output. No, it's uh, it's like a wrapper on an output, right? Yeah. Yeah. So again, we have an input and output. That's that's it. Not yeah. we don't have. Yeah. So we. It, I think he. he he doesn't act or uh, portray the reactive event as an intermediate layer. And I think this is in the, in the definition of, um, let's go to the, in the definition of reactive versus reactive uh, event. If you go here and see uh, in chapter three, let's go to chapter three. Since we have, go into, yeah, the, this is a reactive expression. Yeah. Now, the event, I think the active if event? you look in the output section in 3.2.2, uh, it probably discusses the observed event there. No, yeah, not here. Um, if, can you search up the event here? If it's in this chapter, discuss it all. Yeah. yeah, observers. 
in observers. Okay, 3.6. So if you so yeah. have this example, this code example here, yeah. we have the input name, which is a text input, and the message is generated. Yeah. So, so in this case, we don't have an output within this observe event. There's no render function in there, but how do we show this message that is going to show up in the console? Uh, how does that connect with the with the input? Because it is dependent on the input. Any, yeah. Any ideas about that? Uh, I think that since we call it on the input, so it's dependent on the input. Um, what is done in this, like uh, in the, like is in here, all that is, is what is depend on the input itself. So there is no output. Since we, do, we don't use an output, but you could use an output in other examples. But uh, what, what you're trying to, to do here is uh, creating this dependent or dependency on the input and uh, the messaging. That's it. Okay, so but probably I we think... don't really need any representation of observe event itself. We just need yeah. input, output, and if there's any reactive expression. Yeah, and this I think this is the uh, the 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 definition of observe event since we observing an event to happen or waiting an event to happen mm -hmm. to be executed, and this event itself is an input. So are depending on an input. Um, You're drawing. That's what this the reactive graph would mean that the output greeting is dependent on input name, and uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, but uh, the output here uh, is dependent on the reactive, not yeah. the reactive expression, not the reactive the observed event. Um, yeah. So here, it, if we want to like separate, there is a two reactive glass. I I would say, um, or not not whole, one reactive glass, of course. Uh, like we have one input and one output, uh, and in between we have uh, um. um I think reactive. So we have reactive as an intermediate step, mm. um, but um, there, uh, I think that the uh, uh, the input and output we don't have an intermediate step between uh, to like simulating the observe event here. I would say we don't need an intermediate step. We just uh, creating this relation between an input and output um, uh, directly without an intermediate step. So yeah. that's what I understand. I think this is how it happened, what happened, uh, because again, the reactive is an intermediate step because we calculating something to be used in the output. But since right. the output here in the observe event is uh, just uh, based on event and we didn't like outputting something, if we, of course, uh, in this example at least, uh, in other example, if we have render text here uh, instead of the in the greeting output, we 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 we, got, we have it here in the observe events itself in the uh, in the body in this body. I would say the reactive will uh, the the graph will be, um, let's see, uh, okay, let's. I think what you have drawn is is good because. We have just a single input input name, so you have already connected the output through the reactive expression in the middle. So I think that is good. Yeah, yeah, I think it's it, it's meaningful. I think it's this what could be uh, done behind the scene. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I want to to investigate more uh, and with React log and see what's happening behind the scene in, of the observe event. But yeah, uh, try that. Yeah, yeah, I will try it after after the session. But I think when uh, when we create this re re render uh, text, we still have the same. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like we we still have the same uh, graph. This one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's we it doesn't it doesn't change at at all. Um, so yeah, this is interesting. I think this is how uh, depend on the flavors of reactives. 
since we have a lot of flavors of free activity, um, we have an observe event. Uh, Observer itself uh, is uh, having a lot of um, flavors. We have what we have. We have observe event and uh, event reactive and yeah. yeah, there's a small distinction: event reactive and observe event and. Uh, yeah. So and I think we there is there is time, but uh, yeah, time one, the active timer and uh invalidate. I think there is an invalidate. Invalidate later. Yeah. Yeah, invalidate later. So it depends on the re uh, the way uh the flavor of the reactive function that we're talking about. But m most of the things uh if if it's if it's something that depends on an event or something that will user uh will uh, action that will be done by as a user. I would think that they all have this abstract idea of uh, just uh, uh, making a relationship between the input and output without an intermediate step. Um, but right. uh, other than that, it, it, there is, we have like uh, the intermediate um, reactive expression, which yeah. is an, in, in, it, in its definition itself, it says that we calculating something that will be used afterward in somewhere else. So that's why it's an intermediate step. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for uh, for, give, for for making for giving us uh, this uh, very useful, interesting example. And yeah, it's uh, the more we dig into our reactivity, the more we understand how it's done and what what we could do with it. And I think the the, the next chapter will be more, in, more interesting as well. We'll talk about uh, um, the reactive building blocks, and afterward, the sec the, the chapter afterward, it we we know how to not strictly follow the reactive graph, how to escape this uh, the 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 rulings that we have of reactive graph, how we could escape it, escape from it, and do our logic, which is will become will, will be a very interesting as well. So yeah, this um, I think that's. That's it for this chapter. Uh, does anyone had any other question? No, thank you. Cool. Thank you everyone for attending this and uh, see you in the next session. Yeah, see you guys, bye.